begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of God's Spirit be with each of you. Thank you. Let's take a moment to call to mind our sins, asking God for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. You are the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of all of our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have laid down by your precepts of charity and love, that we should sincerely love those who afflict us, grant that we may follow the commandments of your new law, striving to return good for evil and bearing one another's burdens. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. After the death of Naboth, the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Start down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, who rules in Samaria. He will be in the vineyard of Naboth, of which he has come to take possession. This is what you shall tell him. The Lord says, after murdering, do you also take possession? For this, the Lord says, in the place where the dogs licked up the blood of Naboth, the dogs shall lick up your blood too. Ahab said to Elijah, Have you found me out, my enemy? Yes, he answered. Because you have given yourself up to doing evil in the Lord's sight, I am bringing evil upon you. I will destroy you and will cut off every male in Ahab's line, whether slave or free man in Israel. I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like that of Baasha, son of Ahijah, because of how you have provoked me by leading Israel into sin. Against Jezebel too, the Lord declared, the dogs shall devour Jezebel in the district of Jezreel. When one of Ahab's line dies in the city, dogs will devour him. When one of them dies in the field, the birds of the sky will devour him. Indeed, no one gave himself up to the doing of evil in the sight of the Lord as did Ahab, urged on by his wife Jezebel. He, began, he became completely abominable by following idols, just as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had drove out before the children of Israel. <clears throat> when Ahab heard these words, he tore his garments and put on sackcloth over his bare flesh. He fasted, slept in sackcloth, and went about subdued. Then the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Have you seen that Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has humbled himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his time. I will bring the evil upon his house during the reign of his son. The word of the Lord. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. 
Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my guilt. Free me from blood guilt, O God, my saving God. Then my tongue shall revel in your justice. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. We have a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord. Scriptures are taking us through... um, a very interesting period in the history of the Israelite people. Um, It's clear that God did not intend uh, for the people to have kings. He thought he was the king, right? God is the king of heaven and earth. But the people crabbed and complained so much that God just said, okay, here's a king. And what we see is these kings continue to work out their relationship between power and influence and service of people and staying in relationship with God and being reminded by the prophets. So we see these prophet-king relationships that are always contentious. There's an interesting study in, in the sins of the king and their effects on generations to come. So it's called generational sinfulness and the effects of those sins. I think we as a nation are in the midst of studying that right now. I hope we are. We are suffering the generational effects of sins that began 400 to 700 years ago. And most of us feel like it's unfair because we didn't do that thing. But as the scripture says this morning, so if, it's not, if the effects aren't going to be felt by the current generation, they're going to be felt somewhere. Because every sin has its effect. And until we repent and say, 
I may not have done that act, but I have participated in the structure that it created, the effects of that sin will continue to break and kill. So how do we do that? Well, <laughs> if we didn't get the message this week, I'm not sure how we're ever going to get it. We've been walking through the fifth chapter of Matthew. Whew. And, and God keeps saying to us through the person of Jesus, you know, you've heard this minimalistic law. Like you only have to love those who love you back. You only have to give things to people who can give you something back. You only have to be nice to people who appreciate you. Blah, 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 blah. But constantly in the fifth chapter of Matthew, it says what? That's, it can't be that way with us. We can't be a minimalistic people if we ever want to recover and restore the kingdom of God. It's got to be more than that. And so added today on the top of this sense of having to admit that we are part of generational sinfulness. We also hear that we're called to be as perfect as God is perfect. And that, I don't know about you, maybe you're close to that, but I'm not. But there's a temptation in me to say, well, I could never be as perfect as God, so I won't even try. But that doesn't keep Jesus from taking away that goal for us. He keeps placing it in front of us and says, today we have a day to live. And today we ought to seek to be as perfect as God. We ought to be able to embrace the brokenness that is among us, that we have participated in in our current generation, and that we've inherited for other generations. And what do we do so that today we could do better what Jesus asks us to do? What does it look like for us to love our enemy? to wish good to those who persecute us. Probably a part of that starts in our brains, in our hearts. But because we follow Jesus, it also has to take flesh. This religion of ours is not a thought or a dogma or a doctrine. It's an engagement in the world that God has given to us to bring about the kingdom of God in partnership with him. We have food for the journey, right? He's promised us we'll have what we need to do what he asks us to do. The Eucharist is that gift that when we receive it in humility becomes the food for the journey to be perfect as God is perfect. Let us pray. Loving God, from the beginning of Adam and Eve through the generations, we have continually said no to your dream. And so we have inherited the brokenness that comes to us from all those sins. Help us today to live in hope that we can choose to help to rebuild the kingdom of God. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving God, we pray for our nation that we can notice, attend to, minister with and love those who hate us, those who are our enemies, and those who are living at the fringes of society. For this we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we pray for all who are struggling in, by, in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who are suffering from the isolation of this COVID virus. Pray for people in nursing homes and care centers, for those who have not been able to touch and hug their families, for all those who are feeling in their own homes the isolation of missing friends 
that they might know your company and your compassion. For them we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we pray for our beloved dead. They now are joined joined with you in the company of the saints. May you purify their minds and hearts so that they totally and completely accept your unconditional love. For this we pray to the Lord. So we have some prayers coming in on on the live stream. For the ability to offer love to those who need it. For a person named Terry who's having back surgery today. That the Lord might bring us help to say yes to what the gospel says. For strength for those who are dying and for their families. And for all those prayers here on our altar. And those important prayers that we hold dear in our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Loving God, we offer you these needs spoken aloud and all the others that come from each of our own minds and hearts. We pray them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread that we offer to you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine that we offer to you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice might be found acceptable to God, who is almighty. In our longing to be at peace with everyone, O Lord, we offer you this sacrifice for those who are against us, and we commemorate the death of your Son, through which, while still enemies, we have been reconciled to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift to us. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Jesus. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the entire world. Bring us to the fullness of charity and love, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Administrator, all the clergy and all who serve you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and saints who pleased you throughout the ages, may we come to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, O Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe in the midst of all distress, as we await our blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, through Christ our Lord. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with each of you. Thank you. Let's offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
with those who are not able to receive communion as of yet. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. You are already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Do not let me ever be separated from you. Let us pray. Through these mysteries of our peace, grant, O God, that we may live in harmony with all and bring those who are against us to find favor with you and be reconciled to us through Christ our Lord. Thank you all for coming to pray this morning. The Lord be with you. Thank you. May God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go now, give witness with your life.